Good morning. We welcome you to this uh, morning worship service online. I'm Randall Massingill, pastor of Lafayette First United Methodist Church. We welcome to we welcome you to the service of Word and Table Three in the month of June seventh, year 2020. We are glad that you're with us. We thank you and welcome you and for signing in. Thank you for allowing us to know that you are here with us. We hope that you uh, have your cup ready and your juice. We hope that you have your bread ready or whatever you're using for bread ready for our communion when that comes uh, to be. So uh, if you haven't got that ready yet, we invite you to do that. You have time to do that. So uh, we welcome you to do that. Our announcements today, we want to reiterate what we said last week concerning us getting together. Our target date is June the 28th. That's June 28th. Please write that on your calendar. The time is 10.30, 10.30 a.m., only one service. We will meet in the sanctuary upstairs. 9 and 11 will meet upstairs at 10.30 a.m. And until further notice, we will not have a Sunday school. We will not be having a nursery. We will not be having bells or choir. We hope that this is uh, short-lived, and we hope when we can get back to those. But until then, we will not have any of those. We want to make sure that we're clear about this. If you are over 65 years old, we are asking you on June the 28th not to come to church. And that pains us to ask you that. It pains us because we know you want to come, but we're asking you to make a big sacrifice so that you will remain well. Uh, if you are 65 and older, we are asking you to stay home. Uh, we're going to continue to have services online for you. We don't want to lose contact with you, so please know that you'll still be in contact with us that way. If you are sick or running a fever, regardless what age you may be, we ask you to stay home and to take care of yourself so that you can get better, so that you can come and worship with us when we come together again on Sunday or whatever day that may be when we get back together. Families will be sitting together when we meet on the 28th, but if you're not part of that family, we're going to ask that you sit six feet apart for social distancing. Masks will be provided, hand sanitizer will be provided. Uh, Helen and I are working with those persons on staff concerning our worship service and what we will do, and we will put that in the e-bulletin concerning what we will do so that you will not be surprised when you come to church on the 28th to know what we are going to do. There's some things we're going to continue to do, and there's some things that we're going to push pause on until it's uh, better able to do that. So uh, thank you for your understanding. Continue to pray for us as we journey towards June the, uh, the 28th. Until then, you and I will continue being the church. You and I will continue to live out our faith. You and I will continue to treat one another as Jesus uh, treated us. We will continue to love one another as Jesus loved us. We will continue to serve one another as Jesus served us. And where we have failed in that area, we will confess. And where we confess, we will try with God's help and grace to do better. So you pray for me and I will pray for you as we live out our Christian life from day to day. Karen Gamble, our executive assistant, is at church every Tuesday morning from 9.30 to 11 o'clock. So if you need to talk to Karen, please call her at the church office and uh, let her know what you need, and Karen will assist you. If you have any prayer requests, uh, please email them to the church office. That email address is office at lafayettefumc.org. And that's all lowercase letters. Again, that's office at, that little symbol sign, 
above your number two on your keyboard. Shift number two, that's at Lafayette, F-U-M-C dot O-R-G, and that will get to Karen. Ben Jones continues to stay in touch with our children and youth. He has a summer Bible study that uh, he's doing in connection with Rock Springs United Methodist Church, uh, the youth there. So let me read to you what is on the website. You're welcome to read that on my website, as well as on the church website. Let me read for you what I have here. It says, Children and families, you are invited to join our summer Bible study on the fruit of the spirits. We are partnering, partnering with Rock Springs United Methodist Church, and they have made our intro videos. Our church will host next week. Videos and crafts are available on our church website. Do you know how to get to our church website? Well, this is how you get to it. H-T-T-P colon two dots front slash front slash www dot Lafayette F-U-M-C dot O-R-G front slash children. And that will take you uh, to the site where Ben says you can collect um, your crafts and videos on site. So we thank Ben. We thank Rock Springs United Methodist Church for allowing us to partner with them. We are a connectional system. That's one of the things that we pride ourselves in in the United Methodist Church. These are the announcements that I am aware of. I thank you for your prayers. I thank you for uh, staying in contact with people. I hope that you will call one another, send one another cards. We've received cards. We thank you for those cards. Uh, uh, text people. Let them know that you're thinking about them. You haven't forgotten them. Let them know that uh, you still are praying for them. And uh, I thank you for your willingness to be able to do that. Today is the first Sunday of the month, and first Sunday of every month we have Holy Communion. And as I have said before, I hope you have your cup, your juice, and your bread ready. And if not, I invite you to uh, take a moment to go and gather those so that when the appropriate time comes, we can have Holy Communion with one another. With that, let us hear our call to worship as we begin to worship together. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. That is our call to worship on this Holy Trinity Sunday. And on this Holy Trinity Sunday, you and I pause to remind ourselves what it is we believe and that we live out. What is it that we believe as United Methodist Christians? This is what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by our Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting Amen. We now turn to the prayers of the people. Usually this is where we turn to page 12 in our Methodist hymnal because of our communion service. So we invite you to uh, go there in your mind's eye, if you will, please. We uh, share with you who can participate in Holy Communion. Well, everyone. Jesus says, whosoever will, come. So we invite you, regardless of your denomination affiliation, you are welcome to the Lord's table. You are welcome to this cup, to this juice, to this bread. 
This is the body of Christ. This is the Lord's table. Not a Methodist table. It's not my table. It's not your table. It belongs to the Lord who invites all persons to his table. For it is his desire for all people to be a community of faith. Let us begin. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you pray with me in silence, remembering those persons that we are praying for in our community, in our world, those who are going through very difficult times. Would you remember them as we pray together? Together, O oh Lord, we pray for the people of this congregation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who suffer and those in trouble, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the concerns of this local community, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the world, its peoples, and its leaders, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the earth you have given to our care, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the church universal, its leaders, its members, and its mission. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In communion with the saints, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear the good news, sisters and brothers. Christ died for you and me. And while we were yet sinners, that proves God's love towards you and me. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I am forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. It is not just enough to pray our prayer. Now we depend upon God's grace and mercy justice and grace to live out our prayer in our relationship with one another. We put our feet to our words and live out that which we have confessed, for we do not always like how we behave. Therefore, God change our behavior in our relationship with God, neighbor, and self. Amen. Thank you for your offering to the church. Every week you remember us. Once a month you remember us. Every other week you remember us. There are two ways of getting your offering to the church. One way is to mail your offering. Send it by the post office. It's Lafayette First, United Methodist Church. Post office box 704, Lafayette, Georgia, 30728. Or you can give online. You can go to our church website, lafayettefumc.org, and give your offering there on the website. If you have any struggles or any problems or if something doesn't go right, please let us know and we will put you in contact of someone who can help you. Our scripture reading comes from Matthew 28 verses 16 through 20. 
But before we begin, we pray that prayer of illumination, asking God to help us to hear, and not only to hear, but to listen, and to put in obedience this which he is calling us to do. Let us pray. Now, O Lord, through your Holy Spirit, shine light upon your word, that it may take root in our life and bear good fruit, so that those who partake of it will taste, not us, but will taste you. And to be able to say, taste and see that the Lord is good. For that is a true statement in word and in deed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Matthew 28, 16 through 20 reads, Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always. To the end of the age. Here ends the reading. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This is Matthew's Great Commission. This is the Great Commission that you and I know the most. When anyone talks about the Great Commission, we always think of Matthew's Great Commission, even though Mark has one, Luke has one, John has one. Matthew is the one that we are familiar with. Eleven disciples. Were there twelve? Yes, there were, but you and I know what happened to Judas Iscariot. They meet Jesus in Galilee because the text tells us that's where Jesus tells them to meet him. So they are obedient. Jesus instructs them, and they are obedient to Jesus' instruction, and they come to Galilee as he has instructed them, and there they meet Jesus. And when they meet Jesus, Jesus gives them direction, instruction. That's what the word Torah means. Instruction. Law means instruction, commandment. They are our instruction. I know during Christmas time, uh, whenever I bought my girls something that I had to put together, I would always try and do it because, you know, I don't need instructions. I could do it because, you know, I'm a man. I don't need instructions. I'm a visual learner. Until I tried to put it together and had all these other parts left over, then I thought, well, maybe it's best if I go back and read the instructions. And of course, you know what I had to do. After I read the instructions, I had to take apart what I had put apart because I had put it together incorrectly. Jesus gives us the law. He gives us the Torah. He gives us his word because they are his words. They are his instructions. He knows that we need them. Because on our own, we can really make a mess of our lives and the lives of others. When they saw the risen Christ, and it's interesting, there are two factions here, or two groups of people here, that we see there is one that worships him. He's risen from the dead. They believe. And then there's another group there who see him with their own eyes. But you know what we say. You can't believe half what you see and half what you hear. And yet they see him and they hear him, yet there is some doubt. But Jesus understands when we doubt. There are some things, brothers and sisters, that are just too good to believe, and sometimes you and I believe them, and we find out that it was just too good to believe, so we change our minds about that. But when it comes to the risen Lord, it is good, and we can believe it, because it is true. Jesus has risen from the dead, and has ascended to the Father, and has given you and me the Holy Spirit, 
That is true. We can see that in the world. We can see that in ourselves. We can see that in others. And as well, we can see the absent of it in some parts of the world. Absent of it in some parts of people. Absence of it in certain parts of actions and behaviors. Laws. We see it. We know that that exists too. But it is the church's goal to eradicate all of that and Jesus sends us to do so not on our own power and on our own authority, but in his. Jesus says all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Brothers and sisters, you and I go in Jesus' authority. We go in his power and we receive that through receiving his Holy Spirit. We don't go in our own power. I can do nothing in my own power. I can do nothing in my own authority. When I try to do that, it's like putting toys together without instruction. I make a mess of things. I can even make a mess of things trying to do it the way that Jesus would do it because I mix what I want to do with what Jesus does and that just makes it all kind of chaos. But if I have a discerning spirit, if I will be with my community, my community will help me in walking in obedience. I can't do it on my own. And we all come in his power and authority to live our life because you and I can only do this because he has called us to do it. We have volunteered, but we have volunteered because we've been called. We have said yes. We are willing. We have taken the second step because he has taken the first step in our life. Well, what are we supposed to do? When we come and we hear him call us, well, we're supposed to go. He sends us. Uh, not for the moment, but for a movement. We're not just to believe it for a little bit. We're not just to talk about it. We're not just to study about it. We're not just to be in a four-cornered room about it. We're not to just talk about it amongst people our own uh, race uh, and creed. We are to go out and to live it and to affect all persons' lives, people unlike us, people who's not the same color we are. Uh, I heard some children sing this morning. It was like a benediction. It's, it's a song that you and I learned in vacation Bible school. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And then they sang, red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. That is a song that is to be sung from our heart, and a life that has been is to be lived in and through our heart and through our lives in relationship to one another. But we are to go, and we are to make disciples. You know, that is our mission statement when it comes to the United Methodist Church. We are to go and to make disciples out of all persons for the sake of Jesus Christ, and to make Christ's disciples, not Randall's disciples, but Christ's disciples, people who follow Christ, not a denomination, not some philosophy, but the person Jesus, his disciples. We are to go. We are to move. It is to be a movement that is ongoing, never stopping. Only maybe pausing to reflect and to learn, but never to stay idle, but to keep on moving. He says to go and to make disciples because we're not born disciples. We have to make disciples. And to make disciples is not an easy thing. To make disciples means to unlearn a lot of things that maybe you and I were taught or we learned by osmosis. Maybe we learned without even knowing that we have learned it. There's a lot of things that uh, I'm ignorant of. I'm learned in some, I'm not dumb, you're not dumb. I'm not stupid, you're not stupid. But there are some things that I'm ignorant of. Maybe you can identify. There's some things I just don't know about because I haven't been in relationship with that to know about it. So I may have some prejudiced thoughts unknown to me. I was helping someone, for instance, I was helping someone make some homemade ice cream. And they asked me to get the vanilla. 
Well, I was looking for the vanilla. Well, my relationship with vanilla flavoring, artificial imitation vanilla flavoring, was a substance that was colored brown. I was associated with, with a brown substance called vanilla. But I was looking all through this person's cabinet, and I didn't see a brown substance, vanilla, of which I was familiar with. And they said, well, do you see that clear liquid in a bottle? And I said, oh, yes, I see that. They said, well, did you know that vanilla can also come in a clear substance? And I said, no, it didn't. I've learned something. Now I know that when someone asks me for some vanilla, I know that it not only comes in a brown substance, but also a clear substance. God's children. Is red and yellow, black and white. And I am to remember that they are all precious in his sight. Jesus loves the children of all the world. In all the world. Today, brothers and sisters, Jesus calls us to go and to make disciples. And we are to go and to make disciples not just of people our own color, but different colors. Different nations, not just our own nation, all people. And we are to make disciples by bringing them into the church. And Jesus says, go baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And on this Trinity Sunday, we would expect to hear something about the Trinity, wouldn't we? Because when it comes to make disciples, we need the presence of Almighty God to help us transform into the people he calls us to be. We need the Father. Because we need to know that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son who also sent the Holy Spirit into the world to be our comforter, to convict the world of its sin. Because there are some things, brothers and sisters, we just don't believe. And one of the things that we have a hard time believing is that God came into this world as a human being. He came in flesh. He got under our skin and he knows what it's like to be a human. That's why he can show us mercy. Because he knows what it is like to be human. And he wants us to show mercy to one another. And when we're not showing mercy to one another, he wants us to show justice. He wants us to bring about justice. Because when there's no mercy, then you and I can treat one another the way we want to treat one another. And oftentimes that means we treat one another like an object and not a human being. And you and I don't want to be treated that way. So you and I most definitely don't want to treat someone else that way. And as a Christian, when we do that, we have sinned against God, we have sinned against neighbor, we have sinned against self. And that has happened this week. In our relationship with the African American community, there are times when you and I sin against the African American community. I have learned on Facebook what white people privilege is. Did I ever know of that term? Never knew it. Did I know what it was? Didn't know it. I was ignorant. Does that mean I'm stupid? No. Does that mean I'm dumb? No. It just means never knew of it. Never heard it. Did I operate in opposition to it without knowing it? Most definitely. Do I know better now? Yes, I do. Will I always be faithful and obedient to it? Probably not because I need time to practice. You know, you and I are like a medical doctor. We practice theology. We make mistakes. But we're to learn from our mistakes. We're to grow from our mistakes. We're to grow in love of God and neighbor and self and learning from our mistakes. Jesus calls us to go and to make disciples for Jesus Christ and to transform all the world teaching them everything that Jesus taught and commanded. And we can learn that by the Sermon on the Mount if we keep it in context concerning Matthew. How to love one another, how we will be treated if we follow Jesus, which is can be discouraging. Yet Jesus says, remember, I'm telling you how you're going to be treated if you follow me. If you love me, you're not going to act like the world. You're not going to be like the world. And the world's going to hate you because you're not like it. Expect that. And when they treat you that way, don't be surprised because I've told you to expect how they're going to treat you. It's awful hard to rejoice in something like that. 
it's awful hard not to take that personally because he said, the way they will treat you, not it will not be because of you, it will be because of me who lives inside of you, but it sure does feel awful personal. And maybe some of it is. But if you and I will have the eyes of Christ, if we will pray for the eyes of Christ and the ears and the life of Christ, you and I will be able to see one another as Christ sees you and me. We will be able to see one another as a child of the living God. And how do we keep that on our mind? How do we keep Christ among us? Well, once a month we do something that keeps Christ among us. That reminds us that he is with us. That is the cup and the bread. We are reminded that Jesus is with us always, even to the end of the age. And we need that promise because if you and I are going to be in relationship with one another, we need to be in him and him in us continually so that we can be one with one another. And as our ritual says, the Lord be with you and also with you. Let us lift our hearts. Well, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And it is right to give our thanks and praise. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise you, Lord, and join in that unending hymn that says, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as children of God, and that is all of us, May we say that prayer together that Jesus taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, if you will, take the cup and the bread and choose your uh, person who will administer this to you, who will be your celebrant. And if you will take the bread and break the bread, and as we remember together on that night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. He broke it. He blessed it. And he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And I think we also need to remember how we're to treat one another. After the meal, he took the cup, blessed it, and said to the disciples, drink this, all of you. This is the cup of salvation poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And hopefully we will also remember how we're to treat one another. Brothers and sisters, I invite you at this time to take your bread and your cup and to either take it individually or to use the mode of intention to remember that Jesus is with you. And he's with you and me for a very important reason. And that is so that you and I will treat one another as he has treated us. The body and blood of Christ given for you and me. Take and eat remembering that Jesus is with us until the end of the age. Now, brothers and sisters, may we go from this place remembering that song that we were taught as children and how we could remember it as children and how we treated one another as children. Red and yellow. Black and white. They are precious. They. That means you and me. This is how we're to view one another. In his sight. Jesus loves all 
the children of the world. That is true about God. May that also be true about you and about me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.